The Grammy nominations are here, and there were a lot of surprises, both good and bad. The usual suspects made their marks in the general field, while a few people got first-time nominations just about everywhere. This video is going to be a less structured one where I share my thoughts on who got nominated, who got snubbed, and who might honestly win based on precursors. Regardless, I do think that this is going to be a similar year to 2021 ceremony where the wealth of awards was spread out throughout many winners and there really isn't a singular artist who dominates each field. So who exactly did well? Beyonce did phenomenally. After being snubbed entirely at the CMAs, she managed to secure 11 nominations for Cowboy Carter, allowing her to surpass her husband as the most nominated artist of all time at 99 nominations. It is the most nominated project in music history, topping both Thriller and The Blueprint 3. Beyonce has the general awards, record, song, and album of the year for Texas, Hold Up, and Cowboy Carter. Bodyguard made it into this very competitive pop solo category. Her collaboration with Post Malone, Levi Jeans got into Best Pop Duo and Group. Spaghetti with Linda Martell and Shibuzi got Melodic Rap. She even made it into all four country categories, Solo, Duo Group, Album, and Song. Yaya, A Deep Cut, made it into Americana Performance. We are seeing so many different caucuses come out and vote for her, meaning that there is wide support for her. This really does bode well for her chances because, you know, that means everybody responded well to Cowboy Carter. It does not mean that she will win all of these categories, but she's definitely one of the front runners for the general field, possibly album of the year. And she does not have to rely on a split pop vote to secure a win, but I'm not personally sure the Academy is brave enough to commit to it. But her chances of walking home without an award are pretty low. I still think that Texas Hold'em will take home something. It could possibly sweep both record and song of the year. Charlie XCX's Brat scored nine different nominations, with seven going to Charlie herself, including Album of the Year and Best Dance Album for Brat itself, Record of the Year and Best Music Video for 360, Best Pop Solo Performance for Apple, Best Group and Duo Performance in Pop for Guess with Billie Eilish, and Best Dance Pop Record for Von Dutch. The Von Dutch remix with A.G. Cook and Addison Rae was nominated for Best Remix, but if she wins that, it actually goes to A.G. Brat itself also got nominated for Best Recording Package, which vindicates the design of the record. This is a watershed moment for Charlie, who has only been nominated twice almost 10 years ago. In terms of winning, I'm predicting that her strongest shot is Best Dance Pop Recording, where she's competing against Ariana Grande's Yes And, and surprisingly, Madison Beer, big congrats to her. But the fact that Charlie is able to make it into the general field, as well as the pop and dance electronic categories, really does speak to a wide appeal to voters. I am personally not sold on Album of the Year, but I will consider her a dark horse candidate there as we enter the voting period. Moving on, Grammy darling Billie Eilish collected seven nominations, the first artist in history to have their first three albums get AOTY nominations. Hit Me Hard and Soft also secured a Best Pop Vocal Album nom. The big story is her smash hit, Birds of a Feather, which collected nominations in both Song and Record of the Year, as well as Best Pop Solo. As stated before, she shares guests with Charlie and Duo, but competes against her in Best Dance Pop for for the Over Now extended remix. I'm personally not sold on her sweeping this year. I feel like she will walk away with something, but the fact that her brother Phineas was not nominated for producer of the year does feel odd. Still, this is a stunning accomplishment for an artist who is just 22 years old and has 32 nominations under her belt. Kendrick Lamar should not be discounted, no album out, but he got seven nominations off just two songs. Drake career ender Not Like Us is a strong contender for song and record of the year. It's also nominated for rap song and performance along with Like That. And I do think that it is a strong contender for best music video. Not Like Us was a behemoth, a chart hit. It was widely acclaimed. It could honestly walk away with one of the general awards like song of the year and it would deserve it. Grammy newcomers Sabrina Carpenter and and Chapel Roan each notch six nominations each, both of them having the possibility of sweeping the big four album, record, song of the year, as well as best new artist. 
Sabrina has two different songs up for song and record, Please 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 for song and Espresso for record. Meanwhile, Good Luck Babe is Chapel's submission for both of those and her nominations for both. They also compete in the Best Pop Vocal Space and Best Pop Solo where Espresso is up against Good Luck Babe. Chapel Rowan's producer Dan Nigro is nominated for Best Producer, which is a very good sign for a general field sort of win. But we cannot sleep on Sabrina's nominations in Best Album Engineering, as well as her songwriter, Amy Allen, being up for Best Songwriter. That shows broad appeal. I'm still at the moment going to give Chapel the edge for Best New Artist on the account that this is her first proper release. Sabrina's definitely still going to walk away with something from pop. I am leaning on Best Pop Vocal Album. In terms of both of their Album of the Year chances, I feel like they're going to cancel each other out because the Pop Caucus is going to cannibalize its own votes, making it tough for either of them to win the big award of the night. Taylor Swift has six nominations, the Tortured Poets Department having nominations in Album of the Year and Best Pop Vocal Album. Fortnite has both Song and Record of the Year noms, but it did miss the crucial Best Pop Duo category, which is not the best sign of its chances. Instead, Us with Gracie Abrams was nominated, weirdly enough. When we factor that along with Jack Antonoff's surprising snub in producing, it seems like her best shot this year is Best Music Video. If the Tortured Poets Department was really the favorite to win this year, I'd imagine I Can Do It With A Broken Heart would have actually made Best Pop Solo, but it did not. Also, weirdly enough, the Eras Tour movie was snubbed from Best Music Film despite breaking many records. I want to say anyone who accuses Taylor of being awards hungry is absolutely wrong because submitting Fortnite when she has the clout to submit deep cuts like Beyonce did for Cowboy Carter was an unforced error. I truly think that she could have easily submitted Guilty of Sin or another strong deep cut for the general categories and have gotten some sort of consideration. Still, six noms is nothing to sneeze at. Rounding out my winner circle is Casey Musgraves, whose Deeper Well made its mark in the country album space along with the Architect, which got both song and solo performance. She and Matty Diaz got nommed for Americana, and the album is up for Best Engineered Non-Classical. That last part confounds me about her snubs in the general field, but still it's a great showing for her. After Starcross, I felt like she lost her favorite status. Also noteworthy was Dochi nabbing four nominations for Best New Artist, Best Rap Performance, Best Rap Album, as well as Best Remix Recording. Ray collected Songwriter of the Year and Best New Artist. And last but not least, Clara's Charm secured Best Alternative Album, which meant the Academy does not believe in Claro Shade. Honestly, that one was kind of a surprise to me, considering how much competition she had this year, but I'm glad that she made it through. Which brings us to who got snubbed. I've always said that awards generally do not matter beyond denoting cultural significance or just being nice to have as a fan to gloat about, but it did shock me who got left out. One of the big snubs was Dua Lipa's radical optimism walking away with zero nominations despite Dua's history as a frequent winner and nominee, though I do chalk that up to the album being washed away culturally and lacking a hit beyond Houdini. Houdini came out a year ago, so obviously it got forgotten and it was not really considered for the general field or even the pop awards. I think the lack of promotion caused it to suffer overall. I feel like she should have released a deluxe or done something, but you know what? The last time people put down Dua for her terrible dancing skills, she came back stronger than ever. I feel like this might be a kick in the butt to get her management together and release something that is worthy of an award. Likewise, Ariana Grande's Eternal Sunshine, which I personally adored, was completely snubbed from the general field, only getting Best Pop Vocal Album. A huge surprise for me, only two of its singles, Yes And and The Boy's Mind Remix, made it into smaller categories, but We Can't Be Friends, a number one hit with a great music video, did not click. An AI-enhanced recording of The Beatles somehow got nominated over Grande in the general field, which I thought was disrespectful. Though this could be a reaction to Grande's shifted focus into film and Wicked and more or less treating this album cycle like an afterthought. That live album was a Hail Mary effort. I did appreciate it and loved it, but this album did not get the promotion or care it needed. And the voters responded that way. 
Still, it's one of her finest records to date. I consider it the biggest snub of this Grammy cycle. Benson Boone, who had one of the year's biggest hits, which I still have not listened to in full, got only one orphaned nomination in Best New Artist, which was a shocker for speculators who thought that he would be the token male entry in the pop field. Speaking of which, in the Best Pop Vocal Album space, no men were nominated this year for the first time in history. Megan Maroney, a country singer who I did assume would get a nomination just because of all the buzz that I've seen around her, did not make it into the fray. Hosier's Too Sweet, which was a smash hit, failed to get anything. I think he won an award before. Megan The Stallion was completely shut out despite his and her album Megan doing pretty well for an indie artist. Tinashe also was just completely forgotten about, like completely shut out. I think it's a loss for independent artists without a label to campaign on their behalf. I'm kind of shocked that Shibuzi's A Bar Song made it to Song of the Year, but absolutely failed to do Record of the Year, which tends to reflect chart success. I think that's the distinction between the two awards. And I cannot talk about like Jack Antonoff being snubbed Again, just one of his most commercially successful years to date. I feel like they purposefully removed him from the category to prevent him from winning. He has dominated that award for the past few years, or at least been nominated, but still a huge shock for anybody who's been following the campaign games. Tyla, who I covered a couple weeks ago, was moved from R&B to pop, which did ultimately cause her to be snubbed entirely. I'm shocked that it wasn't even nominated for Best Global Music, where her collaborator Thames, who also makes similar Afrobeats, deservingly got nominated in. Doja Cat completely shut out wholesale for Scarlet and Agora Hills, which were both pretty successful, but again, I think it is definitely something to do with the release dates. My last big snub that I want to discuss is Magdalena Bay, whose imaginal disc was this critically acclaimed, one of the best records of the year, just absolutely criminal. I cannot believe it did not make it. Honestly, like, I was surprised that Claro made it. I, I was imagining imaginal disc would also make it, but them's the breaks, I guess. Overall, it was a very surprising year to some degree. I don't think it was as surprising as a couple years in the past, but a lot of artists that finally saw recognition and deserved attention for all this time finally got it. I can't say beyond a few snubs here and there that this was truly an awful year where the Academy was out of touch. I'm gonna release a proper predictions video before the big night when I have a better idea of who's winning, but I stand by my theory that the awards are going to kind of come to everybody. It's not going to be a monolithic night. There isn't going to be a, re a repeat of when Billie Eilish had just basically taken that entire evening over. Album of the year at this point is truly anyone's game. I would not be surprised if Andre 3000 or Jacob Collier, I cannot pronounce his last name, like, I would not be surprised if they won. And while the other categories have clear favorites, we will only really know when the awards are being given out. So let me know below what you thought about, you know, the nominations in general, who got snubbed, who do you think will win at the Grammys, and whether or not you still care about them. Ratings for the Grammys have been down year over year for the longest time. People do not seem to care about this aside from, you know, like crazy music stands. So are you even going to tune in? Let me know below. I want to give a quick shout out to my members. Thank you so much for supporting my channel. A shout out to my subscribers. Thank you for continuously watching my content. This is just a very quick video while I prepare my video essay for Love Angel Music Baby. It is a retrospective on Gwen Stefani's iconic 2004 record, as well as the upcoming Fame Monster video essay, so stay tuned for that. And, you know, like, just a really quick aside, you know, regardless of how you feel about what happened in the past week, I'm not even going to talk about it. This is a relatively chill channel when it comes to world events. I hope that everybody out there is taking care of themselves and just really doing what they need to do to get past the day or whatever. I think music is a place that allows you to escape the world at large. Not to go full Nicole Kidman AMC speech, but we all come to this place to sort of just listen to music and to vibe and to form community and try to find common ground through the universal language of pop music and I love doing this channel so 
So yeah, you know, I'm grateful to have this community and whatnot. Thank you guys, and I hope to see you next video. I really just got rambly there. It has been a long week, and it will be a long next few years and lifetime. But pop music will always be there, hopefully.